This video is brought to you by Skillshare. We have all seen it, it has been repeated over and over again and unfortunately it is considered as an established fact by most people that medieval people were dirty. Peasants were constantly covered in mud and excrements, always clad in rugged, dirty clothes. Their teeth were horrible and they stank. But what is the actual evidence for all of this? What do the sources actually say? The topic is so wide that I will leave the dental examination for another video. Did medieval people wash? So, what is hygiene? Well, identifying the target of our study will help us with our research. Hygiene is defined as the conditions or practices conducive to maintaining health and preventing disease, especially through cleanliness. However, since the mass popularization of germ theory, hygiene has increasingly become synonymous with sterility, thus narrowing its focus on the extermination of germs. The definition can also slightly change depending on the perspective. From the point of view of a mother, at home hygiene is about cleanliness and tidiness. For a microbiologist, hygiene is about avoiding germs and disease. Ask an historian and it will tell you that hygiene first meant health and gradually became more private and more specific over the millennia for which we have records. An anthropologist might give you a slightly different definition once again. The origins of hygiene, however, are the domain of biology and, in a way, psychology, as a set of behaviours that serves to avoid infection that is exhibited by most animals. Hygiene remains partly instinctive in humans, driven by an innate sense of the need to avoid that which disgusts. Hygiene norms change over time with developments in water supply and sewerage systems and the commodification of hygiene. Hygiene has an ancient evolutionary history and most animals exhibit such behaviours because they are adaptive. In humans, responses to most infectious threats are accompanied by sensations of disgust. Disgust and hygiene behaviour came first. This is important for our research because we are trying to establish how the situation was in the medieval period. If this premise is correct, then the desire and need to keep oneself clean was always present in human society, and that includes the Middle Ages. Even when science and the understanding of microbiology, bacteria and the actual causes of infectious diseases weren't fully understood. Scientific understanding and medical progress aid the development and efficacy of hygiene, but they aren't the basis of it. You don't need to know all the scientific details as to why filth disgusts you, and that, logically, is a much useful trait from an evolutionary point of view. Our universal biophysical or animal cleansing mechanism and grooming behaviour were gradually overlaid on the different continents by the human social history that began to emerge in the late Neolithic period. Far from revealing in muck and dirt, the prehistoric man would have behaved relatively hygienic. He would have groomed himself to remove parasites and kept his living areas free from the humid wastes that can encourage their growth, survival and transmission. He would have avoided close contact with bodily fluids of others. He would have tended to avoid those of his fellows with signs of sickness, unless they were related. Hygiene behaviours do not fossilise, so evidence has to be sought elsewhere. Neanderthals, apparently, used seashell tweezers to pluck hair, and early cave paintings show beardless men, suggesting that grooming began early, perhaps to remove facial parasites. Hygiene artefacts, such as combs, are among the earliest material goods recovered. Excavations of the earliest city-states of the Indus Basin dating from 3000 BC found drainage and toilet structures. Burying the dead can also be thought of as early humans' hygiene behaviour, although there were probably further reasons for ceremonial burial other than just instinctive disease avoidance. The first recorded use of soap is in Phoenician times, although the use of oil and a scraper known as strigil was a more common way of cleaning the skin in the Greek and Roman eras. Roman plumbing and toilet facilities are of course legendary. Now clearly I'm simplifying a little bit, obviously not all societies in all eras had the same level of hygiene. All I'm trying to argue here is that the medieval period wasn't as horrible and unhygienic as people think. Now I would like to take a moment to talk about the sponsor that made this video possible, Skillshare. 
Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of people come together helping each other with thousands of classes of all sorts of subjects with topics such as illustration, design, photography, video, web development, animation, freelancing and much more. So because of this huge variety, Skillshare is perfect for all sorts of people. Beginners, pros, real working creatives, lifelong learners, creative and curious people, you name it. Now there is this class I've been watching here on Skillshare run by Max Brownlee. He's a very popular YouTuber, podcaster, tech head. And the class is called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot and Edit with MKBHD. So uh, the reason why I think this class is perfect for you as well is because oftentimes you subscribers ask me, so Metatron, do you have any advice on how to have a successful channel, on how to uh, make entertaining and successful videos? And here's the thing, I've been watching this series, I still have to finish it, but uh, so far it's been extremely good, very, very helpful, very well put together. He knows what he's talking about. He has experience of over 1300 videos. He tells you all of his secrets and all the ways that he has achieved such success and one of the things that he says is that of course when you start you won't have access to all the different uh, specific gear and equipment that a very popular youtuber has access to including of course budget but uh, he also says that when he started it didn't really have all of this tech but he still followed some very interesting criteria uh, that he talks about on this class and that still brought him success and actually ignited what will eventually become his main job as a youtuber so Excellent class, uh, very good for me, and I think it will be great for you as well to watch. Great creator. The good news is the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain, so go ahead, click the link in the description, join in and have fun. London during the Industrial Revolution was less sanitary than London during the Middle Ages. There is an ancient Mesopotamian text where an exorcist tries to explain the sickness of one of his patients. He says, he has come into contact with a woman of unclean hands or his hands have touched one of an unclean body. A Babylonian letter from the 17th century BC counsels not sharing a chair, a bed or a cup with a lady suffering from a disease. So we have established that cleanliness and hygiene were present not only at the times of the ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans, but even all the way back to the prehistorical man. So what happened in the medieval period then? Why do people think that medieval people all of a sudden became extremely dirty, differently from every other society from the frigging Neolithic era? Well, usually the answer to that has to do with the Victorian period and their contraposition with the medieval man, which was seen as ignorant, dirty, and this also connects with the popularized name, the Dark Ages, which now, even though it's a really cool sounding name, not many scholars use. Exactly, because it carries a negative connotation that now most evidence doesn't really support. Medieval people bathed frequently, their hygiene was pretty regular. Despite the general lack of running water and other modern amenities, there were still common expectations for personal hygiene. Such as regularly washing from a basin, especially the hands, before and after eating, which was regarded as good etiquette. The better off had the possibility of more frequent baths and castles, manors, monasteries and some cities offered their residents better toilets with better drainage and sometimes even had running water using the ancient combination of cisterns and gravity. Naturally, standards of hygiene varied over time and place and even, of course, between individuals. A lord might have had a padded bath and he could have also had a bath that he could bring with him during travel. But the vast majority of people would have had to make do with a quick swill with a basin of cold water. It's common practice for just about everyone to wash their hands and face in the morning. An early wash was also desirable because fleas and lice were a common problem. Soap was sometimes used and hair was washed using an alkaline solution such as the one obtained from mixing lime and salt. Teeth were cleaned using twigs. 
The ordinary peasant was probably more concerned with removing the day's grime than anything while he was washing, but for an aristocrat the situation was different. Bathing had two main functions. The first one, it was basically a pleasure. It was something that they enjoyed doing and they tried to do all they could to make the experience as enjoyable as possible, which included uh, adding flowers and perfumes into their baths and of course regulating the temperature of the water. These were all things that the well-off could do. But the second is more of a functional reason because whenever you were invited into a public event or if you were invited to say a dinner, a formal dinner, then there were some uh, formal requirements that had to do with etiquette that needed to be followed. And we can read some of this in the Les Contenances de Table. We read, and let your fingers be clean and your fingernails well groomed. Once a morsel has been touched, let it not be returned to the plate. Do not touch your ears or nose with your bare hands. Do not clean your teeth with a sharp iron while eating. It is ordered by regulations that you should not put a dish to your mouth. He who wishes to drink must first finish what is in his mouth. And let his lips be wiped first. Once the table is cleared, wash your hands and have a drink. Also, quite a lot of evidence that suggests that medieval people at all levels of society still washed daily but enjoyed baths and valued cleanliness and hygiene. They were able to wash daily, stay clean, valued cleanliness and did not like people who were filthy or smelt. Soap first began to be used widely in the Middle Ages, as both the Romans and the Greek did not use soap but rather used oil. And soap makers had their own guilds in most larger medieval towns and cities. Even the lower strata of society enjoyed a hip bath when they could get one. Another piece of information that most people don't know about is public baths in the medieval period. Not only were they common, not only were they enjoyed by many people, but most major cities provided their citizens with public baths and in larger cities you would have hundreds of them thriving. Now an example of that is in London, in the south bank of the River Thames, where you had a lot of so-called stewards, and that is exactly where the modern English word stew comes from. And in these stewards, citizens could enjoy a hot bath, they could play chess, they could chat and solicit prostitutes. In Paris, public baths were even more numerous and Italy had so many. At one point, some of these public baths advertised themselves as being exclusive. So either exclusive only for women or exclusive only for the aristocracy so that the noble didn't have to sit down or have a bath next to a artisan or a peasant. Now that we have established that people washed in the Middle Ages on a daily basis and enjoyed bathing, let's try and understand why these myths and misconceptions exist. Now we have already mentioned that one of the reasons is the fact that Victorians really disliked the medieval period and so they spread a lot of false information about it, but that's not the only reason, there are other reasons. Sometimes it's a mistaken understanding and reading on some advice given by medieval children churchmen and Christian moralists. You see, Christian moralists at the time were warning against excessive bathing. So this could be misinterpreted as then people didn't bathe, but it's incorrect because if you look at that with, it, with the actual context, then you understand that church moralists at the time were warning against excess in anything, excess in eating, excess in drinking, dancing, having sex, uh, hunting, anything that was done in excess, including religious devotion, was considered a sin. So the idea was to be moderate, not to, to completely avoid these things at all. Also, there are three things that we need to consider that really help us see how bathing was seen by the general public. Thing number one, medieval literature talks a lot about the joys of a hot bath. Secondly, the ceremony or, or the knighting ceremony of, an, of a squire included uh, the uh, part as part of the ceremony, the initiatory scented bath of a squire. And thirdly, we have the uh, discussions about the ascetic hermits who prided themselves in not bathing. And the reason why they did that is because they were priding in renouncing to one of the joys of life, including many others that they did renounce to. All of this pointing to the fact that there is a lot of evidence that people in the Middle Ages enjoyed bathing. 
Another reason why a lot of people in our day and age believe that both peasants and lords in the Middle Ages were dirty is because of the media, in the form of both movies and video games, which oftentimes depict the medieval people being very, very dirty and covered in mud. And all of this really started a while ago, because if you think about it, even the great movie uh, Monty Python in, uh, from 1975 has this very famous scene where you've got this phrase, the following sentence, he must be a king, he hasn't got shit all over him. And this is a scene of two minor characters seeing King Arthur. Of course, it's funny, it's okay, they are saying it for comedy purposes, but the problem is that this same idea has been repeated over and over again everywhere, including so-called historical dramas and historical movies and somewhat historical video games, that now people just see it all the time and so they believe it. Also, another general misconception is the fact that we often say that like everyone who lived before domestic plumbing and electricity became the norm, medieval people would have struggled to abide by modern standards of hygiene, even if they had wanted to. And even though that's true, it is only true up to a certain extent. Please consider the following data. According to the World Health Organization in 2011, about 2.4 billion people globally today live under highly unsanitary conditions, poor hygienic behavior and exposure to the risk of infections are very serious issues. And around 1.1 billion people globally do not have access to adequate sources of water and about 2 million people die every year due to diarrheal diseases, most of them children under 5 years of age. The most affected people are those living in developing countries, those living under conditions of extreme poverty and peri-urban dwellers. This is important because it helps us understand that very much depends on context and who is being compared to who. And again, to debunk a popularly conceived idea, even medieval doctors were enthusiastic about the benefits of bathing. They urged caution during epidemics because heat in the body opened the pores to disease and because sickness spread easily in bath houses. But they also thought that bathing could prevent and cure illness and prescribed it for conditions ranging from bladder stones to melancholy. Nightly bathing or foot washing was a popular late medieval cure for the common cold. As for their clothes, you can look at iconography, paintings and representations, manuscript illuminations that will show you that as far as the lords are concerned, so kings, queens, dukes, noblemen, uh, they enjoyed and thrived wearing very, very beautiful dresses and clothes, very colourful. They loved being groomed and look great. But even when you look at the general peasants, well, you have to remember that what the rest of the population would be, you would have farmers, fish Mongers, miners, weavers, to each its own clothing, if you will, but they still wouldn't be wearing burlap bags and look miserable brown and grey. Colourful clothing was still preferred by the general populace. One very big difference between the modern era and the medieval period is the fact that medieval people fixed things. So rather than just throwing something away just because it, has a, it was ripped a little bit or he has a little problem and buying a new thing, which is what we do as modern people, medieval people would have fixed, which if you think about it, it's kind of closer to what our grandparents did. It's more of a modern thing, the idea of they have the ability to do it, so just buy something and throw away, throw away, throw away. Medieval people would have fixed, which is why when I see uh, medieval, even peasants and farmers, uh, fishmongers and hunters just wearing ragged clothing that is cut and open and they why wouldn't they repair it and the ability of master tailors and how incredible they could be can still be seen in the archaeological uh, remains and findings of fabric and medieval clothing and it looks so well done the stitching and knitting is so perfect that it looks machine made Medieval people understood that personal hygiene only works when you combine it with washing of clothing and washing of the linens that were used for the bed. Now, clearly, I'm not trying to underestimate the fact that 
if you look at the very bottom of the social scale, in cases of extreme poverty, most likely people only owned one set of clothes, the same set of clothes that they would sleep in and then they would work with them. So yes, that would still be the case and you would obviously have the occasional person who just didn't wash, just like you would have it today in that day and age. And interestingly enough, again in medieval literature, when that was the case, it was pointed out as something strange. And we have both the account of a queen who just didn't want to wash and she actually boasted of the fact that she only bathed twice uh, when she was born and the day of her marriage and we also have an account talking about an actual bishop who didn't wash and in fact he was always wearing uh, sumptuous clothing that were associated with this uh, clerical position over his extremely dirty clothing and interestingly enough medieval people in these accounts point these things out as gross to the point that even though he was a holy man when he was buried and they removed his clothing and they were going to give them to the pauperes so the poor people, even the poor people didn't want it. There is still ample evidence to suggest that most people owned at least a change of clothes and that they washed them relatively frequently. Typically this was a woman's work. In the words of a popular late medieval verse, a woman is a worthy thing. They do the wash and do the ring. So, how did medieval people actually wash their clothes? Well, there were, generally speaking, two main methods. The first one was just washing them at home in a tub filled with water, and to this water they would add wood ash or sometimes stale urine. The reason for that is clearly the ammonia. And after the washing was done, these clothes would be stomped uh, underfoot or they would be beaten with a specific wooden tool that was made for it. But many women preferred to do their washing at rivers and streams and there was a specific, in very large ones, such as in the Thames, uh, there were specific utensils called jetties that facilitated this operation. And this was so popular that sometimes it even caused public complaints. So the conclusion is medieval people weren't as dirty as people think. They were actually quite relatively clean. Of course, that the level of cleanliness would depend on the position in the social scale. But we can say that generally speaking, the populace washed daily and they enjoyed public bathing, as is clear from the medieval evidence that we have examined together. All right, noble ones. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please remember thumbs up. And if you're not yet a member of this community, become a noble one. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. On the next episode, we will talk about the dental hygiene. And then we will also have an episode on cities, monasteries and castles and their general overall sanitary conditions. And again, big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring my video. Make sure you remember to click the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this and thank you very much for watching. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.